I think the Mavs now going forward are the favorites to win the finals. I think they're going to beat the Celtics. They are the team to beat. Here is why. This series to me is going to come down to one thing. Focus. That's it. I trust the, the Mavs focus in this series. And I don't trust right now the lack of focus and seeming seemingly carelessness wanting to be anywhere but on the court at times you see from the Celtics in this postseason. And I think because these teams are so even otherwise, I think that small area is going to determine why the Mavs are winning the NBA Finals. Like this, These two teams, right, that are going to face off against each other, they're pretty even if you really think about it. Boston has Tatum and Brown, right? A tremendous one-two punch. One of the best combos in the league. Dallas got Luke and Kyrie, who are one of the most skilled, you could argue the most just skilled with what they've done historically, not so much together, but historically, the most skilled backcourt we've seen in a while in the NBA, maybe ever. And now they're really starting to gel, really starting to connect, or they are playing easily their best basketball they've ever played together in the postseason. And they're only getting better. Kyrie's now becoming, you know, more consistent and more of a factor. Uh, Luka now is becoming less ball dominant, deferring more to his teammates. And now you're seeing these two really play well in sync, where in game three, they, they score 33 points each in a big time win. And combined for 21 points in the fourth quarter of what was a very tight back and forth game three, fourth quarter. Two best players on the court, two best players right now uh, for the Mavs, Kyrie and Luka, play great down the stretch, tremendous, lead them to victory. They are, they to me, like, can't, for the most part, cancel each other out, right? Tatum, Brown, Luka, Kyrie, we'll say for the most part a wash because they are two elite duos. That's even. Defenses are pretty much even, right? Boston is really damn good. The, The Dallas Mavericks had the best defense the last six weeks, two months of the season going into the playoffs. And they've carried that through for the most part this postseason as well and and done a good job, whether it's the Clippers, whether it's the Thunder, now doing a good job on the Wolves as well of slowing down those offenses. So defensively, I don't think one team has a big-time advantage over the other. Even size-wise, they look pretty much uh, like very similar. Both long, both athletic on the wing. Like To me, like these two teams on paper are very, very similar. The difference for me, though, is in the mindset, in the mentality. Boston just goes through these lapses that sometimes last a quarter, sometimes last a half, sometimes last a full game where they just look disinterested, where they just look discombobulated. And they are good for one or two of those games in every series. They've done it now for the last three years, essentially. They have, right, they have had one game in every single series that is just a complete stinker. Doesn't matter who's healthy and who's not, who they're playing, they can't, they struggle with sweeping teams. They struggle with putting some bad teams away. And they open the door where they've not really gotten burned for the most part because they've not, you know, faced or they've mostly faced teams that they're better than. They just rely on their talent, and the talent of the Celtics wins out. The talent of the Celtics is not going to win out against the, against the Mavericks. If you are lackadaisical for a game and just give one away, that to me is going to be the difference in this series. You even give just a half away. Where you come out slow out of the gate or you come out fast like they did in game one against the, the Pacers in this Eastern Conference final, where you're up 12-0 right away, seemingly look like you're going to run the Pacers out of the gym or just coming off hours before a game seven victory in the Garden, which they broke a record in terms of team field goal percentage, and you jump out to a 12 nothing lead right away, they should have cruised to a 20-point victory. Instead, they needed a miracle in game one just to get it to overtime and a complete collapse by the Pacers to pull that game out. Otherwise, they would have went from up 12-0 to losing that game in part because they just let go of the rope. That's how they play. They play to just let go of the rope. And it's frustrating because it happens every single series. And it happens, too, sometimes when the team is worse off. You know, when the Cavaliers announced in Game 4 that Donovan Mitchell's not there, the best game the Cavs played was in Game 4. 
if you're the Celtics, you come out crushing right away and put that team out of their misery. Game three, no Halliburton. We're sitting here looking at an 18-point deficit to the Pacers in game three with their best player uh, on the sideline. That was a great comeback by Boston. And to their credit, I will say this. That is a game that most Celtics teams of the last, let's say, three or four years lose. They don't make that comeback, so credit to them for pulling out a game they usually lose. But you're still down 18 points. Guess what's not going to happen if you roll the ball out, don't really give a care in the world for the first two and a half quarters, and you're trailing by 18 to the Dallas Mavericks. You're not coming back. You can come back against a Halliburton-less Pacers team that you're just more talented than. You're not coming back against this Mavericks team right now with the way Luka's playing, with the way Kyrie is playing, with guys like P.J. Washington hitting some big-time clutch shots this entire postseason. They're going to bury you. You give them that 18-point cushion, they're going to embarrass you win by 30. They're, they're not going to gag it up like the Pacers just did. You give, you know, one bad quarter, they're going to use that to make the difference in the game, make the difference in the series. So that lack of focus that we have seen from Boston every single series for the last three years is not going anywhere. And listen to Jason Tatum. After game three, talked about the message that head coach Joe Mazzula gave them going to the fourth quarter of a game, which, again, there's no Tyrese Halliburton. You know, Joe just kind of told us to stop feeling sorry for ourselves. Uh, and, you know, whatever situation we're in, you know, that's the situation that we're in. And uh, I'm showing us to, to figure it out. Uh, you know, we kind of felt lucky that, you know, we were playing as, you know, as bad, per se, as, as we were and how well they were shooting the ball and we were only down, you know, 13, 14 points on the road. And we still had a lot of, a lot of time left to win the game. Stop feeling sorry for yourself. You're up 2-0 in the series. You got a miracle to win game one, and the Pacers are without their best player. What do you have to feel sorry for? Like, it's that mindset, it's that mentality that worries me with the Celtics. They don't have that championship mentality. They haven't had it when Ime Odoku was there. They didn't have it with Brad Stevens. They don't have it now with Joe Mazzulla. Because the same lackadaisical effort you see in the postseason at times keeps on rearing its ugly head. And again, it's fine when it's the Heat. It's fine when it's the Cavs. It's fine when it's the Pacers. It's fine in previous years with the Nets. It's not going to be fine when you face the Mavericks. You're going to lose just like you lost to the, the Warriors in 2022. That lack of focus, lack of consistency is, to me, the difference in this series. The other thing I want to mention before we get your thoughts, 855-212-4227, who do you think is a team to beat Mavericks or Celtics? The other thing that worries me in this series from Boston's perspective, they play offensively like it's five guys playing all one-on-one. -on -one. That's their offense. There's no flow. There's no rhythm. It's... Jason Tatum takes the ball up. He tries to take his guy one-on-one. -on -one. If he succeeds, he takes a shot. If not, he passes it off, and then it's, okay, Jalen Brown's turn. Drew Holiday's turn. Al Horford's turn. You go make magic. Not a lot of pick and roll. Not a lot of cutting. Not a lot of screening. Not a lot of set plays, it feels like. It's just, oh, we got great players. Okay, you go one-on-one. -on -one. Then, then you take it up next time. Excuse me. Then you take it up. Then you do this. It's all, it feels like five guys playing one-on-one -on -one consistently. You never get it to the point where there's a real flow in the offense. When they're hitting shots, it works great. The problem is, though, when they're not hitting shots at a high clip, that is when it's troublesome. So I like the Mavs right now. They're going to win this series. They're going to face the Celtics. They are going to beat the Celtics in the NBA Finals. The Dallas Mavericks are going to be your 2024 NBA champions.